Hey everyone, my name is Andre Pereira. I'm with GPS Dairy Consulting as an independent nutritionist. Uh, and today I'm here to talk a little bit about innovation and technology. So we start by talking about the innovation curve. I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen the innovation curve, but it's a, it's a bell-shaped curve. And basically right in the middle of it are the early adopters. And that's actually the majority of people. But right in the extreme there, uh, of that bell-shaped shaped curve are the first people that are going to adopt the technology, and those are actually the innovators. I'll use the example of, of uh, phones lately, okay? So when the first iPhone came out, uh, did everybody go and buy that? No, not really. The innovators did, though. They were the first ones to go and buy that iPhone, and they were super excited about it. And it, it was the first smartphone. It had touchscreen. It could help you look at your email calendar and on all those little things right so those innovators they went there and they actually started using it what's the problem though I don't know if you remember the first iPhone it didn't have any apps all the only apps that he had were the apps that came with the phone it didn't have an app store it didn't have anything else so the problem of the innovators that started with with the first iPhone is that they didn't have anything else to do they had the latest cool thing but that's it. They couldn't have different types of apps or they didn't even know the possibilities that a new iPhone could give, right? Um, I'm sure those people have the latest and greatest on phones right now and they're tracking with their technology. But right at the beginning, they were the first ones to discover that and they helped actually the system develop, right? They actually helped, they gave feedback. They told the companies where they purchased their phones from say, I need something better. I need something that's going to work better for me. So that brings to my first comment about innovation and new pieces of technology that exist out there. One, does it work for you? And two, is it going to save you time and make you more efficient or will it just make you a slave of that technology? Okay, so what do I mean by that? Let's say you're going to buy something, a system that tracks where your cows are in the barn, okay? You have a robot farm, it's a big robot farm, you have to fetch cows every once in a while, and you're going to buy that system to just check where your cows are, and in your mind, it's going to help you identify the, cow, the fetch cows faster, and by doing that, you will uh, save time and be more efficient at your fetch cow chore, right? But, uh, so let's say you, you buy that, and it's great at the beginning, but then you start being a slave of the software because, because now there are some problems with it. One of them, for example, some of these systems, they take too long to update. And as they take too long to update, you're walking the barn trying to find your fetch cows and the cows are not there anymore. Now let's talk about what's coming down the pipeline for technology and innovation that uh, I think the future is promising on that is technology is based on vision systems, okay? So there are a lot out there. They're starting, they, they're, they're, they're still uh, at the beginnings of what can happen, but they're very interesting. So basically they look at the bunk or look at cows or look at the barn or look at the stalls and just by vision, by using um, near networks tied with artificial intelligence, they can tell you what's going on in your barn. For example, uh, there are cameras looking at the bunk and they're measuring how much feed is accessible for the cows. And they can even measure, uh, if, you, if they, they're trained well enough by the neural networks, they can even measure if the cows are having enough access to it or if for a certain amount of time every day they just don't have enough access to that feed and that's get, that's, that can give you trouble, right? If they're not eating, they're not milking. So that's one example. The other example is there are camera systems that can track the body condition score of cows and let you know if your cows are, are getting heavier or not, or if they're getting lighter. So those are those systems are in there too. Um, there are cameras that can tell you if cows are laying down enough for enough time, if they're uh, in the stalls, so if they're comfortable, and they're, or if they're not comfortable enough and they're, they're not utilizing the stalls efficiently enough. Uh, mostly, for example, if you have overcrowding, but still the stalls are empty, that's gonna tell you something, something can be going on in your farm. Other pieces of technologies that are very interesting are uh, sensors. Uh, there are some sensors right now that are coming out of Europe, I think, that uh, you can put inside the cow. It's actually like a little bolus that can go inside the cow. 
and tell you her body temperature, tell you her the, the, the acidity of the rumen, tell you uh, how healthy or give you a health score based on several, uh, several data that it's gathering while it's inside the rumen of the cow. Uh, that's very interesting. It, it's technology that's actually being tested right now and being utilized by progressive, some progressive dairies that, that are innovators. Uh, very cool to see. So that's a wrap. Thank you for hanging out with me here. Uh, any questions, any comments, go ahead and send us an email, reach out to the GPS Dairy Consulting team. We're here to help you and we're here to make sure you're profitable and the future is exciting for all of us, okay? So we'll see you around and thank you.